so before we get into it I want to tell you guys a quick story and then we'll hop outside and we'll look at this IS250 so way back when when I first started driving when I just turned 16 and I just got my license one of the first cars that I ever had well the first car that I ever had was a 1992 Toyota Corolla and it was handed down to me by my older sister it had been in our family for a long time and I had a love and hate relationship with this car because when I just turned 16 and this was in the early early 2000s I wanted my own car when I turned 16 I wanted a new car all my friends were driving newer cars and I was driving this 1992 Toyota Corolla but looking back in time of all the cars that I had in my lifetime when I think about this 1992 Toyota Corolla it was the most fun that I've ever had in a car and I'm gonna tell you guys why because it was the first car that I ever had that I learned how to drift and pull the e-brake and fishtail around corners in the rain and in the snow and regardless of rain or snow because actually I learned how to pull the e-brake on dry surfaces I had that much fun with this 1992 Toyota Corolla so fast forwarding back in time or fast forwarding to the present time now that I'm older and I'm a lot more mature I would never do the things that I did in this IS250 that I did in that 1992 Toyota Corolla but truly that is what these IS250s are built for now you're probably saying to me what are you talking about I've got an IS250 and it's all-wheel drive all-wheel drives are not made for drifting well that's because what we are looking at here is my rare rear wheel drive sport 18 inch base model 2007 IS250 so those are stock 18s that you're seeing there that's a stock staggered fitment and uh, this is a rear wheel drive and so yes if in fact you have an all-wheel drive IS250 in between the years of 2006 and 2013 then yes it was very widely produced and there's a lot of them out there and so if in fact you come across a rear wheel drive they're actually very rare and so I actually learned this just a few days ago because I've been thinking about listing my car on Craigslist and Auto Trader. and when I went to look over the past few months there have been a lot of all-wheel drives that have been listed but it seems like they're getting bought out because uh, so I bought my car last year and I paid about 8000 for it and a few years ago you used to be able to get an IS250 like the 2YS model before 2010 anywhere from like five thousand to ten thousand dollars and then just recently here in 2022 the price has gone up and I've seen a lot of IS 250s that are selling for about ten thousand people are asking fifteen thousand and I recently learned that this rear wheel drive that I have is actually very rare it's very rare to find a rear wheel drive IS 250 the 2IS model before 2014 when they went with the super aggressive new front bumpers and right now there's another guy selling an, a 2008 lower kilometers of mine uh, he's asking about 18,000 for it and I was saying because honestly this is a 16 year old car and towards 2030 when we are able to put collector plates on this car it's gonna be 25 years old I believe this car is gonna be a legend it's gonna be it will be well it will be a classic at 25 years old and at that point I think the price is gonna be well above 30,000 if you look at the Lexus LFA so this is something else that I learned the other day that uh, the Lexus LFA the LFA that was built between 2010 and 2012 there was only 500 of those cars ever made all around the globe and it's super rare to have one that lasted this decade and just past a decade is priced anywhere between 500,000 and a million dollars at the current moment and 
I believe this Lexus IS250 because this is like the transition from Lexus. In 2006, when they were able to start making their own designs and they totally went on a whole different design. This was the turning point for Lexus. And when we fast forward, but rewind to the 2014s, 2013s, when they went with the super aggressive front grills, these IS250, the two IS models, are going to go down in history. I was saying the other day, like, I wouldn't really even want to part with my car for $30,000. Tell you the truth. Like, what else am I going to buy? What am I going to buy in, in the market? Like, maybe a newer model, right? But honestly, if I have to part ways with this car, I'm going to want at least $30,000. But if, in fact, we hit 2030 and I put collector plates on this car, at that point, I'm going to be wanting, like, 50, 60 grand for this car. Now, Maybe for the all-wheel drive model, I do believe the all-wheel drive will also multiply in value. Maybe not as much as the rear-wheel drive because this model right here that we're looking at, this 18-inch base, is very rare. So this is a stock car. This is stock fitment. These are stock wheels and it's staggered. This is a stock staggered fitment. So I believe that the all-wheel drive will multiply in value, but not as much as the rear-wheel drive, but it all depends whether or not like kilometers are low because they were mass produced. But if in fact you've got one that has lasted the past few decades, well, not few decades. If you've got the 2006, then that means you've got a that means you've got a 17-year-old car, right? So almost two decades. So if you've got one that's lasted this long, it's got clean title, no accidents, then yeah, the value I believe should be around 20,000. Now I'm in Canada, so maybe that would be a little bit less in the United States or whatnot, but I, so I'm talking Canadian dollars. But truly at this point, I don't, I would not, I wouldn't sell my car right now for anything less than 25, 30 K because really what would I buy? What would I buy? This car is 16 years old. Never one check engine light, no check transmission light. The ride is smooth. The body, the shape, the curves. This is Lexus history right here. And like I'm thinking like even even if someone offered me like 20 grand, 25 grand, I don't know if I would take it because I don't know what else I would buy in that price point. I don't think I could get anything else in that price point. What Lexus is giving us here with this IS250 and this is a 16 year old car anyways guys I truly believe in fact you clicked on this video you've got an IS250 we are holding a serious gem right here and I'm a little bit torn also at, at the moment because you know I'm watching people that are like driving their they're doing reviews of their IS 250s with 300,000 kilometers and I'm like damn that looks so fun like I want to run it up so I can make a video and say that I'm pushing a Lexus IS 250 with 300 kilometers but at the same time I want this car to last you know like I kind of just want to park it now and just let it sit at 160 and just it's just around 2030 is just around the corner and I'm I was confused about it because some people were saying that the classic years is 23 years old but I always thought it was 25 years old but some people were saying it's 23 years old so if in fact the classic years are 23 23 years old well then that's just in that's in six years guys that's that's 2028 and that's just around the corner for this 2007 if you got 2006 well then you're a year you're a year older that's even that's even better but uh, anyways I'm gonna leave it at that this is the IS 250 catch you guys in the next one